Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Hope you, now have, we your, can start. Hope you mm -hmm. have your teas ready. And let's yeah. cheers. Have our Welcome. weekly moment <laughs> of sharing and uh, enjoying. Yes. So I see the little beautifuls there. Now we know who you are, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Big hug. <laughs> yeah, so so we visited the uh, even us in the um, enchanted uh, house in um, Montpellier. So now we saw the little guys and uh, the wonderful family uh, in full expression. Just just a week ago. So, can you hear us well, guys? Okay, good. <clears throat> so over here we're probably gonna hear a helicopter it's still flying around because they are uh, the, the area is still in the transition phase because there was a national catastrophe happening here and actually really from at on our way when we were coming back from uh, Eve and and Nas we were hoping to get back to moonlight and the next day to have the tea as we usually do mm -hmm. and uh although we saw that some really dramatic weather conditions have been announced so we thought okay we might be off internet so let's better warn you already that you know they'll be we'll have no tea because in in those like stormy weathers internet usually pops out first and electricity and all that so that's why we announced um the weather conditions for the last week and uh yeah what and, actually and, happened was mm -hmm. yeah well basically we're back since uh yesterday that was the only the first moment we could uh, access <clears throat> our house so we've been um floating around like little boats uh, our little trio wandering for uh, for a week uh, because uh, literally the whole village was washed away and when I say washed away it has become an island in the middle of mountains with no access with uh, like incredibly dramatic um, consequences um, on on the whole village mountains the whole area yeah like a huge flood it's what used to be a small river had uh, became <clears throat> had become big river that actually throws the mountain stones around so that's the problem water for one but for the other it's big rocks so wherever those rocks go they kind of hit anything on the way so a lot of houses mm -hmm. got literally washed off like you know pushed and they don't exist anymore and then half of our property is now what used to be green is all covered with stones and mm -hmm. two of the houses are severely damaged mm -hmm. and then uh, the whole like half of the yard is completely like uh, under two meters of stone so it's tons and tons of stone mm -hmm. and uh it's literally with there wasn't electricity till two days ago or water so they just plugged those in so we came in and uh how it happens you want to add a little bit to that because how it happens is it started happening exactly when the last of the three planets that were retrograde turned uh, forward. So this was Pluto. So we had first Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto all going back, uh, retrograde in that uh, uh, Capricorn, which is complete uh, re-evaluation of the systems, how the world work works. And now one by one, they popped to the forward position which means now those months, so those retrograde movements started somewhere in March. So now end of October, uh, end of September, beginning of October, last of them turned for, uh, forward again, which means that now what was that inner churning and inner uh, invisible process that had happened all this time, now is starting to be visible. So the transmit, huge transformations are starting to be on the surface. 
So first thing that we have seen of huge transformations is this. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, <clears throat> you know, and when, when we see it happening somewhere in the world, and it applies <clears throat> for all of us, when we see catastrophes happening somewhere, we, you know, we feel compassionate and we are very happy that it didn't happen to us. But the moment that it hits us personally and something that we love, you know, we lose a loved one, um, we lose a thing that belongs to us or something like this happens, <clears throat> we can be somewhat ready, but we are never ready for the actual impact of when it hits your personal reality. <clears throat> so we, we decided to dedicate this tea to one of our tools from Emergency Toolkit that we had to use ourselves because no matter how much prepared we are, <clears throat> it still is a work to, to process um, a huge change with long-lasting consequences and to integrate it in, uh, in one's life. But we do have a tool and mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to share this tool with you mm -hmm. so that any now that those plans have turned direct and it will not be only theory of change, but it will be actual change in geopolitics, in um, <clears throat> everybody's yard, uh, however you will be impacted. But there will be a visible change, <clears throat> a visible transformation that can take somewhat, you know, maybe dramatic proportions. We have friends who have had extreme changes in their lives and they have to, you know, integrate it. Yeah, so <clears throat> this season of the big changes is going to be happening quite uh, dramatically in like in the next three to four months so we will have elections in us and we know what chain re of reaction this brings into the world and uh, there will be huge movements and all of us will be faced to some so, uh, into some of the other sort of traumatic experience that we have to somehow process. Mm -hmm. So we figure this that yeah. we have to go through is, uh, you know, asking for us to cover that on on the T. Yeah. Because and, we. And and the image for that is uh, what you saw on the um, on the post about the T. It's a little bit life and death playing a chess game through us. So mm -hmm. you know the black one moves. Why it's game of life? Because you then you have a move back. So no matter how the, 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 the black uh, part uh, attacks, well, you need to be ready for the move. Yeah, you cannot stop the game and you cannot sit in one position forever. So you cannot avoid um, any unpleasantness, but what you can do, you can be ready to handle it. Mm -hmm. But before we start, we would like to turn it to you guys and ask, uh, have you started seeing some of the dramatic changes yourself or if you if not yet now have you had a huge dramatic change that had happened to you previously in life that that you survived you survived <laughs> and what was maybe one um, most important thing that uh you learned about coping with it and 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 getting alive alive and well on the other side so either previously in life, some big life-changing circumstance or now. Uwe. And Uwe, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> well
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> How about some of you other? Uh, uh, yes, Lisa. Uh huh. Unmute. Yeah, super exciting. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> we decided not to share the images. It's a little bit too exciting. <laughs> Wow. But it turned around. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mars Jupiter Jupiter <clears throat> mm -hmm. We didn't even mention Mars but yeah Yeah so for record this this is typical signature Mars squaring um, Pluto is described as an unstoppable force hitting immovable object Well for us it was an unstoppable river with uh, giant stones hitting houses you know so it was very, very literal. And um, yeah, well, thank you. Your world also got upside, upside down and uh, you're still there. <laughs> you still have internet and mm -hmm. phone. <laughs> so it's a beginning. It's a beginning. This is like what we see at the beginning mm -hmm. of the phase. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> and you, yeah, you are also the best driver that I have met. <laughs> Just on fate like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, more information is coming up. <laughs> Lisa doesn't remember it. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, 
for this sharing. Uh, Jill also has a hand up. Jill, uh, would you like and, to and, share? And, Eve. and then have mm -hmm, Eve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, thank Jill. You, Jill. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and beautiful nature, by the way. Thank you for sharing the image as well. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. So Eve. Ah, you Ah, ah okay mm -hmm. okay but but uh you, you you i think you you have something to share though um <clears throat> so i can introduce that when the moment last week when we met uh eve and nas and their four beautiful children they were like very lightly saying okay we have this airbnb for for a week or so and then we will see uh you know and then we have something for another week uh, somewhere else and like everything is totally open, but um, I thought, okay, that is detachment. <laughs> that is the trust and surrender. So you can maybe say how you cope with that uncertainty of uh, bringing the whole family, you know, with you. Yeah, that's such a beautiful place. <clears throat> so it, that's interesting because I think you were ahead of um, the ahead wave. of the game, you yeah. know, really, because your detachment was so sincere and you were so accepting to whatever comes. Imagine, guys, you know, four kids, twelve suitcases in a country that uh, they have arrived, you know, a mm -hmm. month ago. Uh, that that's quite a surrender. So um, you did your homework before. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, well that that's a that's amazing and that's amazing proof on the other end of the this yeah. uh, turbulence that uh, when you apply that wisdom that you have received actually life takes care of you and it's amazing in in what big way ways life is taking care of you when you only really truly and deeply um apply the simplest and the most profound uh, uh inner wisdom that resonates with your heart so it's amazing it's a very beautiful example thank mm -hmm. you yeah <clears throat> and when we actually 
<clears throat> understand that every trigger is actually just non-surrender. So that's what mm -hmm. every trigger is. It's resistance. Mm -hmm. That needs to be cleared. So very, very interesting. So yeah, thank you for the beautiful example also. Mm -hmm. We really uh, loved seeing how... Uh, uh, on the top end of experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Anyone yeah. else would like to share? Uh, Miriam, yes. Hi. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Something. Uh -huh. Yeah. So to to illustrate this, I would like to uh, to make a point that the size of the shock is not necessarily it doesn't have to be uh, huge or giant. Yeah. <clears throat> For some people, we always get what we can handle. For some people, the equal, equal amount of uh, effect will be from uh, injuring a foot. For me, for example, if I would injure foot, I would keep jumping on one. If I would be injured on both, I would, you know, uh, do it somehow else. So for Fly. me to hear something, yeah, it needs to be at least this scale, yeah, where, um, you know, when I, when I see, uh, I'll just share a detail to, to understand what it takes for me to really reconsider everything. <clears throat> when we came in, of course, the disaster is uh, just uh, heart heartbreaking. 
but when I see my Kuan Yin cards floating somewhere in the garden, you know, and uh, candles like randomly 100 meters from the house and uh, and we open the temple door and they're like you said tibetan ball floating <laughs> floating in, in and the shiva water is the under the mud <laughs> you know? and you know when the the sacredest of sacred is just uh somewhere in the garden or maybe in neighbors properties or or non-existent anymore and everything is mixed with like a 50 centimeters of solid mud that's when i see things you know <laughs> So for me, it takes that proportion to to really reconsider everything. Uh, for other people, they can they wouldn't be able, and I can handle, you know. But uh, for some people, it's it, they can't they wouldn't be able to handle this amount of uh, of um, change and uh, the destruction. They wouldn't be even able to handle a foot, so they handle it on somebody else. So it might be happening to a friend, a dear one, or a country, or, uh, you know, somehow remotely, because that is what the person is able to handle. Because we all have our own sensitivities, and things happen to the proportion to which we get shaken, but are still able to function and act. The point of uh, of this universal call to... Uh, um, transformation yeah the transformation is not to kind of kill you yeah it, the point is to shake you and whatever it is and which whichever is the proportion to shake you turn the one around for you lisa that you crafted it with your heart it's it's turning around and usually it it happens in the um, where you have your heart mm. invested yeah so uh, jill losing her husband of course it was about the heart like something that's dear to her heart uh, disappeared uh, for me you know my sacred space was where my heart was for Lisa your van was your your heart uh, product you know so we were usually um, triggered in where it is important that's why we care and that's why we have to uh, uh, listen you know so it's not about the proportion and we don't have to expect a big catastrophe. It might be big for some, but it's just for us so that we can uh, eventually start looking um, uh, in a different way. Mm -hmm. And then another topic that comes up through your sharings is uh, the, the, the trigger. The, Mariam, you said it, that Jean-Manuel pointed to the trigger that had happened for you and that he says that the way to go is into it. This is something that we have also been experiencing through this process. It's, you know, when we talk about soul's purpose and we talk about really finding what is our uh, soul's direction through life, it's interesting to see how much of those sensitivities and triggers that we might have unresolved shape what the journey is supposed to be so that we resonate with something that would skillfully slalom against our triggers and and, and avoid them whereas actually for this uh, for a shortcut of going uh, quickly into the direction of most expansion is to actually develop the taste to going through the painful experiences and triggers on purpose and actually meeting them, meeting the fears and actually willfully stepping into that fear and see, okay, so what's the worst that can happen and actually overcoming it that way. Mm -hmm. So that is when we are playing the game. When we avoid triggers, when we avoid facing our fears, we're standing on the side, we're not playing. We are standing, hoping that it will not catch us somehow, somewhere. And we're trying to protect ourselves from anything, you know, bad <coughs> happening. So when we're actively playing the game of life, we make our move and, and we, you know, we do something fantastic. And we sort of know that always after like a huge high, there is a equal amount of low. And that is how the game goes. When you are exalted and you feel, oh, now I've got it. In the back of your mind is, 
and what if I lose it? And it always happens because that's how it swings up and down. Not uh, even what if I lose it. It's like it's going to be gone someday and mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. It's like really trying to stay this not attached to... Uh, but this gives... It's like the topic of uh, living and dying. Choosing life, meaning understanding that the death is part of life mm -hmm. and then kind of understanding, okay, we accept being able to live for 200 years or to die tomorrow as well as we accept to have ultimate amount of uh... abundance or to lose everything tomorrow. And if we really measure that we are fine with both of those, then life starts happening like what Eve is explaining. Mm -hmm. It starts actually responding with the best possible uh well like a range of options that almost like on a beautiful menu you can choose from mm -hmm. you know when you're actually <clears throat> playing the game uh you know monopoly or whatever card game uh how do you know that you're really playing a game is that when you accept that you know you might win or you might lose the same game and you're fine with it you know how unpleasant it is to play with people who only want to win and they are like throwing the cards away <laughs> as soon as they lose or they step out and not playing anymore uh, as soon as they start feeling that it's going wrong, especially in Monopoly, you know, mm -hmm. because it's pretty much when you see that you're losing, you don't have a way to get back. <laughs> so that's where people back out and uh, and step mm -hmm. out of the game. But but the, uh, the point that is the only way to stay in the eye of the storm is when you accept the game and uh, you accept that opponent sometimes takes over, but you know, you're very quiet because you know that you will have your say just after. And there are countless, mm -hmm. you know, sayings in the world about it. After the night comes the day, after the storm, beautiful sunshine, and so on and so forth. And we have mm -hmm. experienced it millions of times in our lives. But the point is not to accept only one, to understand that they come just as that image uh, in introduction to the event. It's like a seesaw and it will go up and down and we will be okay mm -hmm. with both sides of the movements. And that's that inner strength that we understand that no matter what comes, we will be okay. We will go through it and still enjoy life. Yeah, <clears throat> so there can't be a situation where it's really like desperate and you have absolutely lost, lost everything. There's no such state as absolute loss or absolute disaster. It's only our sometimes unwillingness to see what is there mm. because we're focusing too much of what is no longer there mm -hmm. or what is lost. So all the depression results in... Um, focusing on what is no longer there where actually if we always include the other part okay for what i don't have what i do have it already balances out the mm -hmm. at least the emotional uh, feeling straight away yeah the question to be asked this is like uh, according to our beautiful uh, sage uh, pepe pepe dancer our Mm -hmm. world musician guy who is also a zen uh, mm -hmm. zen monk so to speak is the million dollar question or gold question is what is the opportunity in this mm -hmm. that's the right question to to ask and then go from that place of what is the opportunity what is this bill opening up for us even the most mm -hmm. unlikely uh, mm -hmm. situation so maybe we can go through those five step yeah. process that we have devised that's going to be part of the emergency toolkit mm -hmm. how to deal with uh, these things when they start happening yeah so this is a tool uh, for uh, this particular situation as per constellation celestial constellation right now which is how to handle brutal unexpected and uh, life-changing uh, events um we might be ready for a slowly coming change, but we're never really ready for our loved one disappearing or our boyfriend walking away. Or uh, even though we somewhat, we tell ourselves that we're ready, but when it comes, it's a different story because there are a lot of emotions involved. When we love something or someone, there are so many emotions that when the source of that disappears, we stay with um, 
you know, like little uh, open crater that has been ripped off uh, in our system. Yeah. So this this tool is particularly for dramatic uh, life altering uh, conditions, and it has five points. So the first point. Do you need this or no? No. No pictures no. today. No, no okay. pictures today. Uh, so the first point is obviously seems very easy, but uh, but it is a little bit difficult to do. It's when you receive the bad news. The moment you receive really bad news, the first thing to do is to accept and to hear it, yeah, and to understand that it's a fact. When you understand that, when you know that someone is dead, that your house has burned down or somebody someone is is really hurt that you care about or you are fired any amount of uh, you know it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily the house but if something dear like you you've lost your absolutely magical ring you know but something that really for you in, in your perception and your experience is life-changing the moment that you receive the news that this has been done, your car is stolen, for example, or it's about the parents, like you, you, you hear that uh, somebody announces that your parents have died in that moment. So this first, we have automatic reaction of denial, of denial as a safety mechanism, as a safety mechanism not to blow up our all emotional uh, mm. system. So we switch on to denial for the reason of simply not overheating uh, the nerves. The nervous system, yeah. yeah. So this will be the first reaction, wanted or not. But then you come back and you just repeat yourself, well, this is a fact, this is real, this has happened, that's it. It, it, is, it is there. I have heard the fact, it is here, it is in my present experience, this moment is inevitable and it is what it is yeah and you have to feel it as a feeling um, because the mind will try to make it but maybe he's not fully dead or maybe the boyfriend hasn't walked away for good or maybe i uh, haven't lost the whole house or maybe you know trying to minimize uh, actually the fact mm -hmm. so you have to stick to the fact and completely accept it as it stands. The bo boyfriend has walked away, my boyfriend has walked away, or my husband, or I have lost all my money in, uh, in the bank. Well, I have lost all my money, like all of it. And sit in that information till it actually sinks and takes, takes uh, the, the value. I have lost all my money, but like all of it, yeah? So the reality embracing the the fact to its utmost reality and when you have embraced the mm -hmm. fact and understood that what it is really and what it means and assessed the extent of uh, the loss or the change this is where you have accomplished the first uh, um, point. Mm -hmm. yeah of course i'm breathing yes. breathing <clears throat> in it uh, well although you'll be 100 uh, 100 miles from uh, <laughs> thinking about breathing but, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, if there's any corner of the mind that can breathe, uh, yeah, of course. It actually does help to be actually as present, as aware of the body as possible. Because body is somehow uh, the bridge between the spiritual part of us and material part of us. So breathing and uh, scanning the body, this is like any sort of Vipassana training comes very handy here. Mm -hmm. Because part of... Uh, the attention span goes to something that is real because mind is going to want to overheat and take things out of the proportions but yet we are back it's real and we are breathing we are mm -hmm. here so we we don't want uh, the mind to allow to build up more than what the fact actually fact is so a husband walking away is a fact of husband walking away but the mind makes a uh, all the story of what will what happen as a result mm -hmm. and what uh, in what ways you are hurt by that 
but we are sticking to the fact of what is happening. So when you have brought this experience to, to the body and acknowledged so it is what it is, the next step, step number two, is uh, taking care of emotions, allowing the emotions. So by no means you should hold back reaction. Kind of pretending that it had not happened. What, and, whatever yeah. that reaction might be. It uh -huh. can be complete denial, screaming or feeling extremely offended. Uh, if, uh, if someone has taken away, let's say someone has robbed uh, the house. Yeah. So it's an anger towards those, those people who have, uh, who have robbed or someone has stolen the car, the anger towards the person. So whatever it is, don't spare anyone by trying to be nice because the resentment and uh, it, it takes any form, uh, the emotions take any form and they have to be uh, allowed out. And this is a crucial moment of like the shock of uh, losing a, a dear one of course, it's different flavor of emotions than a uh, shock of losing uh, a job, for example, or losing money. So every loss or change will have its own set of emotions. So you need to immediately give space for it to come out. And, you know, better sooner than, uh, than later, at the first possible moment, it has to come out through tears or screaming or blaming anything you know don't be afraid of uh, the shape how it comes out yeah <clears throat> swallowing those feelings <throat> will turn to something more toxic and uh, it will stay in the body so it's really good to release them as soon as possible yeah and, <clears throat> and that's where the breathing comes in uh, why why this moment is crucial uh, to acknowledge emotions and let them out is because this is the moment where the shock imprints in every cell. If it's not let out, it stays in and it stays in every cell and creates a, a long term, um, you know, t toxicity because uh, well, yeah. in, in, a, in, a, in a fact, you know, mm -hmm. Whatever you have lost, it's a fact, and then the life continues from that very moment on. So we don't want to keep the moment where the life stops for too long. The life can stop for, if you need five minutes to cry your eyes out, if you need one minute to make a primordial shout to, like, insulting God universe and everyone around. Uh, like, however you want to, to, to let it out, one minute, five minutes, technical parameter is somewhat you know within an hour you can imagine that at that moment of feeling <laughs> those emotions it's like a t if you remember tape recorders the record button is pressed and record button for the body is pressed if we don't get it out now we will have to deal with it later because it will be written into the body and the, the head the recording head is going on with life so then we have to dig it out later on and to clear it. That's mm -hmm. what we are doing now yeah. in clearing, for example, the early trauma that happened in our yeah. life that we didn't know how to heal it. So the childhood trauma stayed in the body and now we have to retrieve it. So this is the open window to release it so it doesn't have to stay locked in the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any change... Shaking, yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. Any change in plans actually uh, implies this emotional uh, uh, reaction to, mm -hmm. to it, yeah? So you have to give it an official space and then say, yeah, fine. I'm mm -hmm. letting it all out and um, mm -hmm. don't ever think of how people will perceive it. You'll excuse yourself later if you have to, but uh, this needs to be um, let out, breathed out, shaken out. Uh, however, your constitution, you know, personal uh, yeah, body running, preference. Running, uh, uh, punching. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa has a question. Uh, Lisa, the mic. Mm
Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lisa, I understand. It's if if I understand you well, it is almost like you are faced with uh, such huge overpowerment by nature that you are kind of helpless to do anything. So it's mm -hmm. like inability to act, and then it's numbness for like I am not in, able to control the situation in any way, nor to contribute. And this is where underlying principle of all these five steps that we are talking about is that we have in our spiritual journey to have faith and to at some point understand that there is a higher force that works in the right way that we might not be able to see at the moment, but that we trust it. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Yeah, exactly. So... And the difference is also your nervous system, how it's built. Because, mm -hmm. for example, me seeing those, you know, kind of my cards mm -hmm. and sacred objects floating out of the house and all that I've built with my own hands kind of being swallowed by, uh, uh, by, by water and, you know, unstoppably coming and coming. The person who was here was absolutely, you know, under the shock, but... Well, it's not his thing, so he could be uh, relatively constructive. If I would have witnessed destruction of my life, um, as you say, I would feel exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I was spared because I wouldn't be able to handle that part. So I was spared. So I'm just facing the facts. Yeah. So if you witnessed your, your um, business being uh, flooded, that means that it was maybe not as destructive but still, you didn't find uh, the expression for that emotional part. Like anger towards nature, but how can we be angry to, towards nature? It's just the force, you know? So you have almost no, no one to blame. And that's where the numbness comes, because you can't blame the water mm -hmm. for just being there, you know? Uh, so in absence of... Um, someone to blame the victim <laughs> actually the numbness comes as a result mm -hmm. it's much easier to blame um, thieves or or someone who who has hurt you or even that boyfriend that walked away it's it's very different if you have a target to blame you can shout out your grief and then you're pretty much done but if you have no one to blame then you're somehow want to, wanting to blame God, but it's not quite good because you know you're supposed to say that it's all good, it's all right. And then you are a little bit hanging in the void because like uh, between knowing how to react and not being able to react, it's like, uh, and there's a jam in your system. And this PTSD comes from inability to blame something, you know. And uh, the... The, the good thing is, yeah, you mm -hmm. can shout at God universe and um, they can handle it. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. the, uh, they can handle. You can shout at the nature, the flood, the water and anyone. You can treat them and blame them because it's our human nature. We can't do otherwise for now. So you're allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, oh we come back to that faith we come back to the point that we whatever happens to us like whether that flood of your business or this flood of the property here eventually points to something that we have to do internally and externally and mm -hmm. once that these emotions this is only step two mm -hmm. and when emotions are allowed to express themselves we will get to the point where we need to see what is the actual message. But the difficult part is to handle the wave that had come our way. Yeah. So if your reaction is numbness, then this is 
this kind of being overwhelmed by nature but but wanting to control it whereas uh the fate would give you the step to kind of detach yourself from this moment in this moment i don't yet understand it but i will and i will look towards it as you know riding this way mm -hmm, yeah. but for now i am allowing the i don't know what it is yet so mm -hmm. being powerless yeah that's a huge thing being powerless because of course when we see uh the the nature acting earthquakes we feel super powerless <clears throat> but we we feel powerless but we are not powerless we do have one very important power which is we have power over how we react and how we take it and that power needs to be used at all times we cannot stop the flood um, we cannot turn back the damage but we have the power to decide how do we live from the next minute on yeah and that is a very crucial power to 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 use and the only one that we are supposed to to use actually so of course uh yeah mariam blame blaming the restaurant or or blaming the others it's only a psychological it's only valid for that one hour that you need to let the steam off you are not in a position when you are under shock you are not in position to to internalize or to understand what has happened so uh, it's better <clears throat> to blame a restaurant or the waitress or the whole world anyone but, you uh, want there it's, are long-term okay. consequences to that type of mentality so us has turned itself into completely litigious society this is what we call litigious is the people who first sue and then think and this has actually destroyed their health insurance system it has it kind of eats the system inside out because there is no uh real uh sensible approach to things anymore it is you first sue then you think so this has made that insurance companies charge so much for health insurance that you cannot like repairing your tooth is 800 dollars. like somebody who has lost their fingers in an accident chooses well i will have these two attached by the third one i cannot afford and things like that because uh that system has to pay for insurances that is far higher uh expense than the actual medical procedure so it only seems like a good idea we're gonna take it to somewhere else i will sue the restaurant where i fell but it actually propagates in super destructive ways socially mm -hmm. so that um next step mm -hmm. so there's little step in between yeah it's not the actual third step but a little step in between don't try to understand why it happened to you it's not the third step but it's between the second and the third mm. because when you're freshly you've cried your eyes out you have accepted the fact and then is this moment of uh, big eyes feeling of emptiness and so now what so the mind is so shocked of this sudden change of curve that he, and, and it's, it's in total panic and it doesn't know where the direction is. So it wants something. It wants uh, someone to tell, oh, it's because now you will be free to do something else. So it wants to grasp something, yeah? It's not the moment to give it any explanation. It's not the moment to look how it could be avoided, how could it happen differently and and what uh, what am i supposed to understand it's not then you don't don't do that then don't do it freshly out of uh, extreme emotions uh, trying to extract the meaning it's you will not see clear in any ways mind is just trying to grasp uh onto something you know like a sinking uh, person grabbing anything that floats yeah so you will not f have any truth in that particular moment because it's too much agitation uh, there but what you can do in this moment of a gap when you have lost something or life has changed dramatically, what you can do in that moment is to understand that you are within the game of life. And to understand that at this moment, the new timeline is being created. So we spoke about timelines like last time. You are literally now starting the new timeline. What do you want your first step in the new timeline to be mm -hmm. so those questions of why it happened 
what am I supposed to learn? You will ask them, but not in step number three. Mm -hmm. Although this is where we would want to, to get it clear, yeah? So the step number three is my first good thing that I can do right now in my new direction, however I see it, yeah? Um, for example, what, what, what we did, uh, you know, when I had to face the truth and I received the image of uh, the house full with stones and everything, you know, under the property covered with stones, the property covered much. with stones, and I realized that the extent of damage. Uh, so in that moment, okay, let's get the best tea there is. So we were in a shopping mall, and uh, we got like the my very favorite uh, best possible tea, yeah, to begin with. And, and then we casually went to the other shop and got me a new uh, Mac, you know, uh, the little laptop. Like, uh, you know, all while uh, having, you know, calls uh, from survived guests, uh, uh, <laughs> disaster, like messages of compassion and support. Uh, so in the middle of that going on, like actively uh, beaming and, you know, the news falling in uh, that uh, there are no roads and will not be roads for years to come and, and, and. So we calmly went and, you know, asked for the keyboard. So is this keyboard or that keyboard or uh, this memory or that memory? So you actually continue living from that moment on for what it is the next thing that you would do. And allow, mm -hmm. you know, the smoke uh, be in the, in, the, mm -hmm. in, in the background. So, <clears throat> yeah, like Anna says, it is actually preserving the inner joy at whatever state is possible. So literally creating little mm -hmm. moments of joy that are for now islands of joy that will then become mm -hmm. thicker parts of the joy and then uh, co uh, finally completing the timeline of, of joy, joyful events. Yeah. So you can also say what else we did. We then booked the Yeah, play. we booked a beautiful apartment with colors that we loved, uh, you know, Okay, where do we want to be? Like literally, the whole world is open. You want to go left or you want to go right? It's clear we can't go home. We don't have any home, you know, <laughs> to go to. So where do we want to be? Like, okay, by the sea. What, what there is by the sea? And uh, being constructive about the next moment of life that you have to deal with right then and there. So what's important between the bridge, between the point number two to point number three, so between the emotionally accepting uh, the fact and uh, going on with life uh, in the best way you can, this bridge is crucial because depression happens here. If you don't deal with emotions or you don't make that immediate next step, you have a danger of being stuck in a loop of... Uh, contemplating the loss let's say boyfriend walked away and you will be turning that information over and over and over again in your mind and adding i should have seen it coming how did i not uh, know what will now and you know the stories and stories and stories will grow on that fact of loss on the simple fact there will be layers and layers of new stories that are weighing mm -hmm. and actually taking us out of the present moment. Yeah. So the point is present moment as beautiful as possible. Yeah. If we dwell in a loss for even, you know, a day or two, that loss is magnetizing uh, <clears throat> facts of same kind, you know, and it becomes a big ball of, and you will feel a, uh, much more having lost much more than what you actually have lost yeah and it will apply to the future and uh, all sorts of reactions will, will come from that but if you manage to live from that moment on and do even half-heartedly doesn't matter like if you don't like, get the new computer with full joy it's okay uh, the important thing that you do it if you don't go to spa with full excitement it's it's okay the important that you go to the spa you do the haircut or or you, you treat yourself in any way, or you buy a, a sumptuous dress, for example, to celebrate the loss of your boyfriend. 
like any next thing that you can do even half-heartedly but that you do it mm -hmm. yeah to to bridge out and not stay in that gap of of the loss because where depression comes is that when we got stuck on um, on the loss uh we keep adding 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 to that so which actually robs the hope and uh, the future so then from there the next step is is much more difficult because we will dwell yeah, we're in, digging the hole then yeah, we'll have to get out of it exactly <clears throat> so every dwelling on the loss is digging the hole deeper and deeper and um yeah, mm -hmm. less less and less possible to mm -hmm. uh, to see any meaning in that. Yeah. So it, this step does two things. First is it's a first step in the new timeline, which is going to continue as the first step always is. And second is we are back to present and out of the mind loops. So mm -hmm. we do both things at the same time. Yeah. So whatever nice thing for for the body or for your environment you can do as a next moment of shock it's very important because you have to keep yourself fully present you have to show up to life and be fully present with all senses like eating something delicious not saying okay i don't feel like eating no no you might not feel like eating but you will eat and something beautiful and something tasty and something that you cook so n never give in to that uh, victim pull of uh, stopping to breathe, uh, stopping to live, stopping to sleep, stopping to eat. Nothing, there's no loss that can justify stopping living. Yeah. So that's why it's the game of, of, uh, of, life. of life because uh, the game goes on. So if so. that uh, <laughs> event was the crow on that uh, chessboard, that beautiful meal and beautiful tea that we made is the yeah, white, say, white on the move. I'm so eating, kinda, enjoying my food anyway. You know? Because we cannot really escape to feel really good at those moments, well, no, no matter what's in the background. It's like, it, it's just confirmation of engaging with life. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that it's a bridge, literally a bridge between uh, the point number two to point number two. Because three. if you don't, uh, point number three, if you stay in the point number two and you miss on the bridge, you'll stay on an island, literally self-isolating from life that continues going on. Sometimes we feel irritated that, you know, we've lost a loved one, but life goes on as usual and people are smiling and going. So the life has, the, you know, the world hasn't stopped. How unfair. Yeah. I have a loss, but the world goes on and people are smiling. It's like everybody should stop with us but uh the bridge if you manage to get on the other side you're no longer an island you're on firm ground of continuing living and continuing doing whatever however you see it um possible from there yeah so when you're standing on the ground of uh point number three so concrete little steps uh, in the life that goes on then the step number four uh, becomes much more easy and step number four mm -hmm. is retrieving the message now yeah. we are ready <laughs> now we're ready you say okay so i'm i'm ready to live and here now i can see so did i see it coming could i have avoided it and you answer the crucial questions first oh kitty 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 Oh, mm, cuteness. Yeah. Oh. So you you answer first the very important questions because you you know that you're dealing with your mind in all of this. The the main battle is with your mind, who who is super shaken and doesn't know what to do. So you have to give your mind the clear and the concise answers. Could I have avoided this? Yeah. Yes or no. Well, if you could and you didn't, well, too bad for you. Don't uh, dwell on it. Uh, that's that's it. Uh, and I'll give you concrete examples for that. If you couldn't have avoided, well, then fine. Then it's uh, it's the surrender part that can come in. the The second question would be: Am I responsible for this? Like, have I caused it? Yeah. 
of of course you know if you in in some accident you knock some person over and is dead yes you are responsible for that and and then if you are responsible for that you have to fully fully accept that responsibility yes i acknowledge that i'm fully responsible for causing this disaster and uh, it's mine so i can act on it if you are not responsible and someone else knocked you over uh, you are not responsible of being in the wrong time in the wrong moment so if you are not responsible directly if you are not the cause of your event have i caused it is a better have question I, have i caused it you are still responsible to integrating it in your life because it happened to you let's say i haven't caused a natural disaster by myself although we have done so much magic here that maybe but uh, not to this extent i mean i don't think we're that powerful but the if i think that uh, we haven't caused this i'm still responsible in a way that i respond to the situation that has happened to me yeah but that changes from which perspective yeah and the, the third question to ask the opportunity yeah what is the opportunity here so that is the actually gold question what is the opportunity in all this this is turning the whole event in a constructive and life-affirming uh, way mm -hmm. so where do we go from here what uh, what good this brings me and this is also in this moment you can ask external uh, help to to tell you a little bit uh, to give you more infos on the circumstances how did you attract the uh, the event to you um what could be the lesson in it so mm -hmm. this and only here you can start putting things in perspective yeah and uh here is also a crucial question okay this is what i have lost but what do i have what do i still have and what i haven't lost because we shouldn't mm, focus on uh, on the loss uh, more than on what we still have yeah remember what we said before it is being ready to lose everything in every moment and being ready to have everything in mm -hmm. every moment that's the ultimate state that we are looking for yeah and you'll so. see how how it makes you rich yeah you have lost all your money but you have your body and your health you have lost your health but you have a house and friends and money. Uh, you have lost uh, both uh, uh, house and money, but you have a beautiful community or the world hasn't come to an end. Or the sun has come out this morning. Yeah. How so amazing is that? It, it's not possible that you don't have anything. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, also bringing that part out, yeah? So this is a moment of questions and answers with yourself and uh, a guided, so it can be a little bit extended moment where you will gather the elements of uh, mm -hmm. what has happened and don't settle for easy um, easy and superficial uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah. Here really the world speaks to us and here the signs speak to us and here is really this time to uh, consider reflective reality. We had the whole tea that we dedicated to reflective reality. What is the reality telling me? What can I learn from what I'm seeing in the monitor of the outside reality? And this is also where Jill uh, mentioned meditation. Here, through meditation and through interacting with the reality outside, we see what is the message for us and what is the hidden opportunity, golden opportunity in this. Mm -hmm. Like I have lost my business so how would that be an opportunity i've lost the business income and everything but if that business was keeping away from traveling or exploring other countries well here here this is an opportunity that same thing that uh, uh, was keeping you tied to one place now is no longer there so embrace the opposite what it allows you to do because it's no longer there and if that was your biggest fear Maybe the opportunity was to step into that big fear so that finally it has been worked out. And you see mm -hmm. that you can actually survive and live beautifully in spite of that. Well, with that fear dissolved. Yeah. So it's playing around uh, from, from all uh, qu question, question and dialogue, uh, question and answer of how this makes my life better. 
how this loss makes my life uh, better. For example, it's difficult to apply it to sensitive things like, uh, let's say, parents dying or what, but sometimes a parent also can be a reason why we don't do some of the things. Well, so then suddenly the loss of a parent can become an opportunity or, okay, I don't have to be in that place anymore because of uh, this change in... Uh, in situation oh, well also what i wanted to add when it comes to dealing with that and dying this is that huge topic we will have a tea about that and probably even the whole course but huge messages are in the topic of uh handling our and others that do we allow actually people who are close to us to have a peaceful and uh, uplifting dying experience or are we grabbing to keep them with us for as long as we need them it is crucial to go through the process of dying in a certain way that the soul is uh, propelled towards the highest realms and when too many forces grab the soul to stay within this incarnation it has more difficult time to go through that process. So death being a taboo in our society, this we feel is one of the most important things to actually start talking about and to understand mm -hmm. how to approach it and how to uh, make it one of the best experiences we ever had in life and not something that we fear. So this whole thing is what the death of a close one is always bringing us uh, closer to examining mm -hmm. so yeah the death topic is super important yeah so i'll give you some of examples of dialogues that are possible in this point number four um one example is uh for example zane <laughs> she has topaz topaz, topaz. she has left Mm, her brand new camera in the, in the kitchen that got swept away by floods and stones and mud so the camera of course like you can even see the sand inside of the objective yeah so the, camera, the lens the lens so it's completely uh, useless so the question then okay so that's that's for example uh, her loss so could could she can ask her question like could, uh, did I cause it? Well, no, I didn't cause it. Could I have avoided it? And then she um, looks back and says, yeah, yeah, I could have avoided because I had the intuition, let's take camera with us. Because by the way, for that weekend, we just spontaneously, all three of us decided to go and fly in the, in the air tunnel. Uh, that's, that was the reason why we were not at home. So she wanted to take the camera with her, but she didn't. The second thought was she wanted to put it away and she didn't. So could I have avoided it? Yes, I could have. Well, I didn't. Too bad for me. I extract the lesson. And next time when I have an intuition suggesting me something, I would maybe better listen. Yeah. So it's, it's a little expensive, but very uh, prominent uh, reminder of uh, how can we avoid things by listening a little bit more carefully to the little voice. Yeah indicating the best solutions mm -hmm. um for uh, for uh, other people i i know a family where they lost uh, a loving father and a beautiful husband and woman stayed with her two kids and fell in such a depression that the kids were semi-abandoned you know for uh, for many years so the woman should have asked the question okay i have lost my love of my life i have lost the husband of my father i have lost provider of the family this is what i have lost what do i still have well i have my beautiful kids who actually need me more than ever because they have lost uh, one of their parents and this shifts in perspective your own loss towards more constructive attitude of what do i have i still have children to care for and the life finds its resource uh, uh, there, yeah? We 
we did listen. I had a super spontaneous kind of uh, initiative. We we had uh, booked those flights, yeah, for 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 some time. Yes, Jill is asking. We took this decision to fly instead of staying home. Actually, we went to fly before we knew that this is happening. So it was happening in the end of the trip. But flying was one of my uh, wishes. And you remember in the course that I wanted to fly without any outside means. So this has ha finally happened through that flying in that fly tunnel. But we have gifted each other the, 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 the flying uh, experience so that we meet the element of air altogether. So, so we did respect our intuition that uh, that said, OK, let's pick these dates, you know, out of the whole, uh, I don't know, three, four months. We have never traveled all three of us together because it's, uh, you know, someone always had to be here. And for this day, in spite of someone actually had to be here, we listened to, in, to the intuition of uh, traveling all three together for that, those particular dates. So if we didn't listen then we would have this question could i have avoided witnessing the disaster yes i could have avoided if i listened to the nudge to go and travel on that particular weekend so and that would be like witnessing the disaster would would have been the price to pay for not having listened to to intuition to, to intuition go. to go yeah mm -hmm. and it would make the whole experience even more difficult yeah, you can imagine that this flood had happened in several phases. So the first phase took part of the land washed away, like, uh, I don't know, 15 meters of mm -hmm. the property. Then it receded. Then yeah. another wave came and destroyed the whole little lake that we had here and, you know, came close to the house, then receded. And the third wave came and flooded the whole two houses that were here. And uh, so imagine witnessing this would be much worse than just coming and seeing the end result and okay we see it once mm -hmm. so in this way it, it it could have been avoided and it was avoided by listening to it as well as for example a simple but very painful fact uh, that uh, our cat our little cat we said okay she can stay for two days and our helper will give her food but i insisted for the cat to go and stay with my daughter in nice so the cat was not here. And imagine what happened that the whole village was cut off. So the cat, uh, the poor cat would have stayed for a week without food, yeah. locked in a house. And that were... would be a, a absolutely unbearable uh, a situation to handle. And at that moment, I could have asked myself, could I have avoided it? Yes, I could have by just, you know, listening to my intuition and bringing the cat away. So the... Uh, this is how it works, that when we do follow very closely these little nudges, they're really little. I mean, it was very inconvenient to get the cat uh, to Nice. You know, it's whole 140 kilometers and we had no time uh, to manage that transport. So I invented little more reason to go and I sent Zane with uh, the guy to, to, to go to Nice and bring the cat uh, at the same occasion. So by following up on intuition we avoided another heartache you know so that's how how crucial sometimes it might be this uh, irrelevant uh, maybe like random act that you do because your subconscious knows what is coming it knows and it's preparing you to handle in the best possible ways you have a hard way to take it in and you have the easiest way we we call it uh, uh, handling the shock, like receiving the shock, but with cushions, yeah? So you can't avoid the shock, but you can land on cushions. So intuition is preparing the cushions for you so that you land in something that you don't lose everything or you don't, it could have been worse. When you recognize that it could have been worse, that means you have been given some cushions. And you've managed to hear them uh, coming. <clears throat> so that's the importance of intuition on a daily life because you have no idea what it avoids as a, as a consequence uh, later. So which step are we on? So that was the step number four, examining 
uh, dissecting yeah, and retrieving, uh, retrieving retrieving the lesson the message. Uh, mm -hmm. out of it. And the step number five is uh, a concrete next step in um, on the new timeline. On the new timeline. And that concrete new step is a. Uh, it could be random at the beginning, but it's very important to, to keep on the game and to keep going. You have to accept that you will not know. Uh, like your house doesn't crumble with a message uh, in the middle. Now you will do that. Yeah. You, you probably, it will take time to understand now what. But you will, if you don't see it straight away, uh, you have to walk the first 10 steps out of the smoke so that you can start seeing. So those first step, uh, steps out of smoke in any direction actually are crucial to start magnetizing the new timeline from there on. And of course, trust and surrender is such a important component of these first steps because you have no idea and don't wait to have an idea to start walking. Uh, the idea is, you know, something that we get in the mind, but quality of the timeline we spoke on the course, I don't know if we spoke also on the T's, is in the frequency of that timeline. And it is in the quality of joy and quality of your feelings on it. So if we have initiated the timeline by doing something beautiful at the beginning, and then we now continue walking with that inner joy, actually, Something interesting I heard, uh, read these days, and this is about Bach, Bach, uh, the composer who composed such a huge amount of uh, beautiful music that uh, nobody could compose that volume in their life if they were not divinely inspired. But his, he had a bunch of uh, obstacles in his life. He had created something like 20 children with his wife but at that time, in 17th century, maybe something like a third survived or something like that. Maybe only five. So at the occasion where one of his daughters was dying, his prayer was, God, would you uh, please allow for my joy to be uninterrupted in life? Because from that joy, all the creativity came. So if he could stay in the place of joy in spite of what is happening on the downsides of the life, that's from where his life creation could continue. So that's how he was writing the quality of his timeline through the difficult times. And this is how we walk. We don't know in our mind what this timeline will have as a goal yet, but we know its quality and we follow its quality. It's almost like going through the uh, through the dark woods by the smell. You don't see with your eyes, but you can smell, and you smell the qu uh, the quality of of the right way. It smells like uh, apple pie, for example. What uh, did you have, uh, Sheila? Your your it, timeline it smells like roses, right? <laughs> so you already built that in your timeline. It smells like roses. You are. This is how you're following it. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the next steps out of the smoke in any direction, in any direction, like with, wherever you know can put your foot in that direction you go, it will eventually lead you out of the bushes and on the actual next uh, timeline. Um, how it translated for us was yesterday when we, we came finally and, uh, and had, had access, well, uh, you know, we had to dig our way to open, being able to open the door of the, the house that is stand, still standing. And, uh, you know, there's this moment of, uh, that you understand, okay, it, it might take years to, to get anything back on track, but we have to start somewhere. So the only thing that was not washed away was a broom and, uh, you know, some sort of a little spade. Yeah. So we took those tools and, uh, Victor put the uh, Freddie Mercury show must go on. And, you know, <laughs> we took those brooms and, uh, you know, at least uh, cleared two square meters of, of mud to be able to open the door. But uh, th this is it, you know. 
when you are able to laugh at your own misery and uh, you know somehow rescue from the mud a, a, a tool because for example tool without a handle <laughs> you know like seriously you know it's funny but like our rake is 100 meters from here in suspended in the tree yeah that's where we found our rake and uh, everything else is just wildly somewhere mushed in a mass of things so a simple thing like a garbage bag uh, well to begin the the whole garbage containers are under one meter of stones so, <laughs> so when you don't know where to start you start where you can which is you start uh, somewhere if you have one spade well do with that one spade uh, if you have your just on your own two hands, start with your own two hands to to do this first uh, first getting out of the bushes and um, in whichever whichever direction you don't have to have a full idea already. But that forward movement is is very very important. So when you are the step number five, you're five five you're fine. Mm -hmm. You're already back walking in, back the in new... life. Mm -hmm. And walking the new timeline. And choosing life. At the same time, so don't rush those steps. They might take, you know, we might leave them in a day. Uh, something might take five days. Something might take uh, three months. Doesn't matter. As long as you respect this order of things. And remember not to minimize the impact of the drama that it had on you. Um, you have to be radically honest and not to say that it's nothing. Like that boyfriend walking away, don't say it's nothing. Uh, even though girlfriends might say, oh, it's one of, uh, you know, it's one of uh, those, there'll be many more. Yeah, it might be true in the essence. Yet the impact of that one person walking away from you is tremendous. So respect that it was important for you and uh, don't let anyone minimize mm -hmm. how how it feels but on the other hand don't dwell on it and don't dwell yeah. on that loss mm -hmm. like for for me a drama is to to lose a cat i was more worried about the cat than uh, the furniture but uh, you know some people would say but what you lost a house with what cat you know so we all have different uh, uh, s s sensible points uh, and we have to respect it for ourselves even if others don't respect them for us yeah uh, losing a precious ring can be a tragedy and others people oh but it's just material object yeah yeah one thing is your experiential reality and one the other thing is what it looks like on the surface so your experiential reality may, may be as for us that our cat plays a very important role because it's like really a member of family. Somebody who doesn't even know it sees it as something small. Yeah. So you respect uh, the, the the impact, how it was for you, and don't let anyone take that part away from, mm -hmm. uh, from you. But on the other hand, also don't rush with conclusions of, uh, of what it means. And take yeah. uh, those steps one, one to the next, making sure that you cover them all at some point. And so, you'll have a clear co inner confirmation uh, uh, that, okay, you've, you've transmuted. Because what, what is the point of, uh, of this whole kind of uh, structured procedure is that you learn with this, you can learn to deal with any kind of impact. Yeah? And turn turn it into a, a productive experience and mm -hmm. david earlier he asked so how to prepare the world for what's coming well these actually things are preparing us for what's coming some people have lived through hell in their lives till now so they are not bothered they're ready to handle anything that comes but most of us have lived in very peaceful kind of lives with minor tragedies yeah so we might not all be ready mm -hmm. yeah. for, for any case. So anyway, these are the five steps. This is going to be part of our emergency toolkit. And uh, this one will, yeah, we feel it's going to be needed for what's coming. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the uh, and David, uh, you you asked how can we prepare others? Well, we can take in mind this and try to help people when they are you know when they're facing some um, overwhelming truths and understand that what is it when it's overwhelming? Overwhelming is when millions of questions emotions and no answers meet in one place which is our nervous system mm. and we just cannot handle it we don't yeah. know how to sort it out it's a traffic jam yeah not enough of a bandwidth to process what's happening so what we can do is we are on constant inner work of widening that bandwidth so that we can allow more things to flow through us and uh, with surrender and grace you know, like uh, I can imagine that a lot of things can happen to Sadhguru and that he will sit in complete silence and, 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 and presence. Uh, and other spiritual guys that we knew, like uh, uh, what is the Vietnamese me meditated Thit Nhat Hat something like this i can't pronounce his name well anyways so even our our uh, pepe dancer so a he's, pepe dancer, yes. he's such a he's extraordinary percussionist one of a kind and uh, and Absolutely. he broke so badly his wrist he will never be able to do uh, uh what he loves the most uh, ever again or for a long long time so being able to uh, to em embrace rather quickly the radical change in your life's direction depends on how much you have meditated and um, opened that bandwidth in your life mm -hmm. so the better you have done the homework like Eve and her husband uh, working on detachment before they lose anything you know is quite a good solution so if you can advise anyone how to be ready for things up front well, work on them before they hit mm -hmm. you. Like, do your homework before and you'll be fine. You'll know how to handle. For example, now with this information, if you keep it somewhere in the back of your mind and, and you have a, a difficult situation, you'll be, you'll be ready. You'll be able to handle it in, uh, in the most kind of decent ways. If somebody has written the na names of the step, maybe share in the chat so that everybody has the five steps written so you can an easy way uh, cut and paste and have a little uh, procedure that is a reminder of this <clears throat> yeah yeah so uh, in, in very short the whole point is to get the emotions out of the situation and and let the life uh, go on and make your move uh, so as not to not to stay on the the opposite uh, the black chess uh, move that you didn't like and not to stay there but to be able to quickly process emotions and make your move of the white chess as a response to what has been given you that is the life mm -hmm. game of uh, of life yeah come to think of it uh, we don't play only the white we also have uh, a good use for the dark who is teaching us the lessons but anyway mm -hmm. i think that's what we uh, how much time we have for today mm -hmm. and uh, if you have questions uh, or, or comments uh, please now is the moment yeah if there are some quick questions let us know now or later in a group yes anna yes yeah. anna Uh, we see you, we see mm -hmm. you. Mm
Yes, 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 Anna, you're completely right. Um, this is another perspective to bring into equation. You're right, because there are people for whom, like Miriam, you experience things on your body, so your foot hurts. Yeah. Um, for me, my you know I have always owned uh, places, uh, houses, etc., and they always reflect something. So for for me, definitely, thing happening in a house is uh, is sparing from it happening on the body. So yeah, so cars, cars, pets, and houses take on something that otherwise would happen in our body. Yeah, um, the, the the lessons will come at the level at the, the least painful level that you are willing to hear. So they will come first in something very very mm, subtle. Then they will start raising volume if we keep refusing to hear. At the end, if we keep refusing to hear enough, they will uh, hear it enough. They will come into the body in form of diseases. So. And if still we don't hear, then we have to die and to be reborn and say, okay, well, in this incarnation, maybe you will listen better. So mm -hmm. it is progressive. Yeah. It's a progression. That's why also monitoring what's going around with uh, around you is so important because you can understand when something's kind of brewing before it actually has to be full, mm -hmm. full experience. And one more question from Lisa. Lisa. This is yeah. 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 So, you know, there's a very interesting thing that Sri Aurobindo says, uh, and it is about when you repeatedly, like, you change countries, persons, places, but same thing keeps happening. Yeah. If you look at, if you are not able to figure out your life's purpose or what you're supposed to do through this negative thing, you can imagine what keeps happening to you the most and kind of unavoidably. Uh, I have water calamities anywhere I go since forever. I don't know how to solve that. And now it's a giant one. So whatever is your loop that keeps coming and you, you don't seem to be able to solve it uh, in any ways, look at positively what could it be in the opposite side so from it that is, negative you mm -hmm. might be able to guess what your life's mission is actually it is you know usually hiding something important about your life's mission and that is actually the trick because we always think that our life's mission is something less than what it really is it is bigger and it's hidden by something that is so uh, repeatedly unpleasant that we don't dare to really uncover it but it's there yeah. for you look this that is your loop look what is mm -hmm. what it's pointing what can you what is the gift that you have that's masked by that yeah and guys this is very important for everyone actually if you have a trigger and you're working it and you're solving it that means it was just a trigger you know from somewhere else but if you have that one trigger following you for all your life and you are unable to put your finger on it, it might be really indicating where your goal is, mm -hmm. where your biggest goal. So I've been considering these past few days, if I have these like water things everywhere, or well, maybe I have huge powers over water after all. And <laughs> it keeps happening and I keep kind of dealing with, okay, there's a leak, I stop the leak. There's another leak, I stop that leak. So if I keep dealing with the trigger and it still doesn't stop the whole uh, paradigm happening, then I maybe I have superpowers in there. Who knows? Yeah, I have to look. <laughs> you know? 
So <laughs> it must be, you know, when it uh, when you can't weed the thing out of your life, no matter how you, much you try, uh, it must hide some bigger uh, meaning, and it's worth looking into it. Mm-hmm. As uh, mm, as Miriam says, this is first time that she twists her right foot. Uh, we had the right food for Gio, actually. So uh, you might guys uh, speak about your right foods at some point. Uh, Mariam, Jill also ha- kept hurting her right foot till till she understood that uh, the right foot has a message. So mm-hmm. you have to ask your right foot what it. Uh, what is the message what is for the you? Message? <laughs> And you know how to do it. How about constellation when your right foot is part of it? <laughs> great. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. I'll ask it uh, what it has to say. It hasn't been heard, maybe. Mm-hmm. And fixing things. Yeah. When you. It's mm-hmm. much better. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to hear that, Miriam, because we you remember when we had session with you even back in Bali that we feel that you are ready for the deeper level of hearing things yourself rather than having mm-hmm. to see through constellations. I'm happy to hear. This is maybe how it starts for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. And, um, and fixing fixing things at home well you need to map it to what are your you know, what what needs to be fixed within yourself because everything of course is ext- our extended body mm-hmm. everything in in home is our extended body so, so understanding um, mm-hmm. which parts are you actually fixing and what they represent on you so mapping the physical of your apartment that you're fixing Anna to actually segments of your life and parts of your body and then you will get a deeper understanding what you're actually fixing. Too mm-hmm. mental. Not, not, not necessarily, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, it would be too mental to use somebody else's. Mm-hmm. You have your own. And, you know, we can talk about that yeah. and help you with this. We usually look at the categories. Of mm-hmm. co- like, is it like a cleaning mechanisms that are breaking? Is it uh, a fire-oriented, like cooking mechanisms that are mm-hmm. breaking? Is it so water? The, Bathroom the, the nature would be water. of what is needing to be fixed. Exactly. Ah. So cleaning is your, yeah. <laughs> it's it's your lymph system, something yeah. that cleans your body, and uh, the water would be the mm-hmm. urinary tract and all the waters. Mm-hmm. Cooking mm-hmm. would be, uh, well, we have to map it. So, but it's it has the same functions, same functions and same orientation. Mm-hmm. And when you dwell in it, you will see the correlations because you will feel what in your body corresponds to that. You know, like do you feel like a little detox or do you feel like uh, like uh, some cleanse? So you, you will see. <laughs> think in think in categories and don't uh, get stuck in uh, in those the mental systems. mentally mapped something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, think in categories and and feel for yourself. All of these systems, including that Feng Shui is there to give you the starting point and from there on your truth is much deeper than something else that somebody else mapped which was true for them so for example the here's the uh, lisa has a great correlation (laughs) your bum needs a little kick yeah (laughs) because your van light is in your in your bum I, i love that that's an example cool so any other questions or we wrap it out for the day? Uh, Sheila.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when you honor, so we learned actually very surprisingly that uh, that it is a tantric way. So tantra is not you know what popularly is mapped nowadays with uh, you know sexuality and stuff. Tantra is interpreting your life, mapping spiritual process on everyday life uh, events. So, you know, uh, uh, painting your house by mapping it to uh, to remodeling yourself from inside is tantra. Yeah. So it's very it's very very interesting that you map those daily what you are doing uh, anyways, but you give a spiritual meaning to them and this is becoming a part of your uh, inner process <laughs> yes please do we would yeah, love to see do. Mm -hmm. well thank you <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We love sharing these things with you and it's beautiful to hear how it reflects mm -hmm. for you. And we're happy that we managed to be back right on time, you know, mm -hmm. just for yesterday. Yes. Some some sort of road was dug through to allow access. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy that we could manage. So sending you a, a lots of love and a big hug and we see you next week at the same time uh -huh, so uh, let, let them uh, copy the uh-huh yeah uve posted the five steps so you have them in the notes so you can copy and paste them now's the time thank you sending you <laughs> lots of love thank you Thank you. If you guys would be a little uh, more close, we could all sweep a little more. <laughs> Together, yes. <laughs> it would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.